Hey, gun people! Well, here's the headlines here. Drop the gun, cops yell to Brooklyn man. He didn't. And died in 62 bullet. Is that fuselage? <laughs> Is that what they put there? Hang on. Okay, had to look it up. A series of shots or missiles thrown at the same time in quick succession. <laughs> All righty. Learned a new word. Let me hear how it says. Fuselage. Fuselage. Okay, now we know. Crazy ass writing. Body camera footage shows. So if you go down here and read it, drop the gun, suspect in it, uh, Taekwon Tyrone Graves 34, Dr. Graves 34, was hit by 12 of the 62 bullets fired. So out of 62 bullets fired from 10 officers, he was hit 12 times. So maybe each officer hit him one time, just to make sure. When you watch this video, it's freaking amazing on how scared the cops are. Incident. Seven police officers assigned to patrol in the 77th precinct. Who the hell is this dude? Why don't I just have a flashback to Adam 12? Dun, da, dun, dun, dun. The story you're about to be told is true. The names were changed to protect. There ain't no damn innocent. Anyway. Let me get to the good part. Millimeter firearm at the male who was struck one time in the lower right leg. After the shooting, Taekwon Graves ran eastbound on Bergen Street and stopped behind a tree in front of 253 Kingsborough Second Walk. The male gunshot victim ran into the Kingsborough housing development where he was later transported by EMS to King Quite a few shots fired there. We see all the flashes. Tree in front of 253 Kingsborough Second Walk. The First round right there. The male gunshot victim ran into the Kingsborough housing development where he was later transported by EMS to Kings County Hospital. His injuries are not life-threatening. This shooting triggered a shot spotter alert. Dun, 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 dun. Shot spotter alert. I think that shot spotter is that new system that they put up to where as soon as these little cameras and microphones pick up a gunshot, it triangulates it and I think it gives the location within... It's either 10, 12, 22 feet, something like that, um, of where the shot was fired. So cops can go there in case everybody's gone. They can look for the shells and find other evidence. Anyway. In addition, there were several 911 calls placed by witness. Hello? Hi, this is New York City 911. Do you need police, fire, or medical? Yes, yes, yes. This is Shindler here in Kingsborough. Who the hell can understand this woman? You need a freaking interpreter. Second walk, hurry up. Okay. Burke, what is the location? Oh my god, hurry up between the first and second walk. Bergen between. Bergen and Rochester, hurry up. I think two people. I Burke? think two people laying Burke? down. Bergen and Rochester? Yes. Kingsborough. Kingsborough. They keep talking over each other. I can't even understand. Either. What are the ones saying? First walk. Okay, you said somebody was shot? I see two. Listen, I just seen how many people. You just heard. <laughs> this woman gets pissed off at the nine one operator. Hangs up. I told you, people, say what you need to say and hang up. Good for her. Bob, I see two people laying on the ground. I don't know if they're gonna be in when you got. Somebody got up. Can you come? How many it's, shots did you hear, ma'am? How many shots was it? Five, right? Five. Oh my God. Two people. Please come. Okay, five shots fired. Did you see anybody? This lady lives in Brooklyn. You 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 think she's acting like it's the first time she heard gunshot? Hell, why don't you just follow a cop around? They'll shoot somebody within five ten minutes. Did you see who did it? We can't see nothing. I'm looking out my window, man. Okay, you have But we see two people is down. Okay, did they get shot? First floor, please. First floor, Bourbon and Rochester, okay. please. Did they did they get shot, ma'am? Click. In response. <laughs> You go, girl. So the shot spotter activation and 911 calls location arrive. While conducting the search, police officer Santos observed Taekwon Gray. Come on. Shit, I didn't even see you. What? 
You heard any shots going off? Just so the cop didn't even see him. He's sitting there in plain freaking sight. If the guy wanted to shoot the cop, he could have. Cop didn't even see him. Now they're going to freaking panic and shoot him 62 times. Well, they're going to shoot at him 62 times. They're only going to hit him 12. There's no. No, 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 no. Stop, 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 stop. Stop what? Stop. Stop moving. Stop moving what? Stop moving. What you mean? Stop moving. What you mean stop moving? What you mean stop moving? Stop moving. I mean, I'm, uh... Put it down. Okay. I'm going to take a swinging wild ass guess here and say that the reason the cop draw the, drew his gun is he, he just saw the gun. So first he didn't see the man, then he sat there looking around talking, and now he finally saw the gun. Put it down. 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 He's got great cover right here. He can move behind and uh, be leaning around and just have his, his eye and his gun exposed around this thing so he's got some cover, but he stands right out in the open. Why? Because, I mean, cops just, they just set themselves up to get involved in these shootings, and then they shoot somebody. Now, I gotta admit, these cops yell at this guy for a long time to drop the gun, and I don't even know if he moved. I think one officer jumped the gun, and everyone else joined in. Drop the gun! Drop the gun! Bro, drop the gun! Drop the gun, bro! Drop the gun! Drop the gun, bro! Bro, drop the fucking gun, bro! Remember, this is in New York. Highest gun control in the United States. Guns are very hard to get. They have background checks. They have 21-day waiting periods. You have to have a license to... Nobody gets a concealed permit except government. Nobody can carry a gun. Highest gun control around. How does this guy get a gun to be walking around the street and shoot somebody? Because gun control doesn't stop bad guys from having guns. It only stops good people from having guns. Because there's a lot more good people with guns... And that's a bigger threat to the government. It's not worth it. It's not worth it, bro. Drop it. Drop it. Drop it, bro. Drop it. Drop it, bro. Finally, somebody starts yelling, back up, get some cover, create distance. I mean, right now, if the guy hasn't shot somebody and you're standing there yelling, why can't you all just go to cover and wait? Call in somebody with a shield, call in some bean bags, maybe get a helicopter to spotlight him. I mean... There's all kind of things you could do to defuse and de-escalate this situation. And all you get is yelling, 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 bang, 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 bang. So there's two cops here with guns, if you look at the shadows, almost on top of each other because they both want to be able to shoot. It's not enough that they have probably 30 cops there and 12 of them end up, or 10 of them end up shooting. What was it 12 shooters? No, 12 hits and 10 shooters. So they have 30 cops, 10 shoot, 12 hits, 62 rounds fired, and a bunch of cops that did not fire their guns. Hmm. Bro! Drop the gun! Move from it! Drop it and move! Move! Drop it and move! Drop it and move! Put your hand behind your back! You hear all the cops yelling? How does this guy know who to listen to? Who's in charge? Is all the cops telling him the same thing? No. So they're all telling him different things, so they're no matter what he does, he's going to be wrong. This is a big problem in policing because there really isn't any type of chain of command or nobody takes control. There's not one person designated to talk to a suspect. And, I mean, if you're a cover officer, I talk about contact cover. One person contacts, the other one covers. The cover officer does nothing but provide cover overwatch and, uh, you know, support, has his gun out and gives cover fire if he needs it. You have one contact officer. Most of these video shootings, you have 5, 10, 12 cops yelling commands. And then they wonder why, they, hey, the guy didn't listen. Well, who didn't he listen to? I don't know. He didn't listen to somebody. We we hollered everything in a freaking dictionary. I'm sure he, he didn't comply with somebody. So the shooting's justified. Really?
was the supervisor there i say hey look guys there give me a couple guys give me a couple long guns rest of you guys shut the hell up we don't need to surround this guy there's probably hundreds of innocent people back here we have cr created a huge circle around this guy and when we shoot our bullets are going to go everywhere so look somebody needs to be the designated shooter with a long gun you shoot if this goes bad you do this they had plenty of time to kind of like hey Let's slow this thing down a little bit. But everybody's just too itchy to get their shots fired so they can bend their badge and, you know, talk about how, you know, put a little tattoo or cut a stitch off your patch, whatever whatever the, the notch on the belt used to be. You know, in the Old West, it was a notch on your pistol grip or a notch on your belt for the number of people you killed. Now it's bent badges, stitches, tattoos, uh, certain color scarves, or whatever. Let me see your hands. My man, raise your hand. Let oh, me see your hands. Drop the gun. Let me see your hand. Raise your hands. Drop the gun. Raise your hands. Don't move. Show me your hands. Don't move. Show me your hands. Okay. Put the hands, man. Up, man. Hands up. Man. All right, all right. Put one foot in front of the other. Now back it up. Now do the hokey pokey. Turn around. Spin three times. He didn't listen. I had to shoot him. I was in fear of my life. Okay, it's justified. Let's move on. All right, all right. Your hands up. Hands up. Stop! All right, my man. Let Who thinks if he raises his hand with the gun, a cop's gonna shoot him and say he pointed the gun in my direction? If you raise your hand on that one, you'd be right. Let me see your empty hands. Empty your hands. Raise your hands. Raise your empty hands. Step back, step back, step back. Boss, step back, step back. I would like to know how many cops are on a scene, man. With all this yelling, there has to be 30 cops or more. This is what big government. This is why we always need more police. You always need to pay more taxes. You always have to have the police protect you and give up your guns because then only they have guns and they'll protect you from this bad guy who's already shot somebody, who could have shot a bunch of people, who could have shot the cop. He could have done lots of carnage before the government showed here, but the government's going to be claiming huge success. Look at us. We showed up with 30 officers, fired 62 rounds to stop the suspect and protect the public. And we protected and served the shit out of you people, and he got hit 12 times out of our 62 rounds fired. We are good. That's because of our training experience, our great hiring practices, only hiring the best, the most qualified. We are a supreme agency, New York Police Department. Back. Okay, how many rounds were fired? Anybody get that? They're little. Unfortunately, if there if there was an actual shooting somewhere else in a city right now, their little bullet detection finder wouldn't be working because it would be too busy telling where all the cops are at. And I wonder if they're using that to designate where all the cops fired. There's too many cops right there, y'all. I'd rather us get hit than y'all. They're going to go out kill him. They're going to kill him. They're going to kill him. I'm trying to hear what the fuck me. Okay, so this girl's figured out that they're going to kill him. Well, why are they going to kill him? Could it be that he had a gun and that he shot somebody and that they've told him several times to drop it and he's not complying? Is that why they may be going to kill him? Or are they going to kill him just because he's black and everyone's racist in the world? I mean, it's just crazy that somebody would be shocked that a dude that shoots somebody and has a gun with the cops and doesn't drop it gets shot. And somehow we're going to blame that on color. It's him. Over here, cause you slow, running. Yeah, he's right over there. He got his hand. He got his hand. Shoot him, bro. Drop the fucking drop. Drop the drop. I told you. He's 
They killed him, boy. They killed him. They killed him. Wow. That's a shocker. They killed him, boy. This guy is screaming in fear of his life. See, when you hire scared, weak people, look, dude, the dude's got a pistol. He's freaking 20, 30 feet away. You have multiple officers with guns. You have all the freaking uh, advantage that you could have. You're behind cover. You have a bulletproof vest on. I mean, the odds of this guy hitting you and you're screaming like your pink panties are in a knot and too tight in your crotch area and you're screaming at this guy out of fear and you just can't wait to shoot. And I don't know if this guy shoots. I think he just ducks and covers. I bump it up. If you want to go to a video leak police and watch a full video, you can. Hit him a subscribe and a like so YouTube will at least know that somebody appreciates holding government accountable. Shit. Drop the gun! Drop Shit. Oh, God. Just from a tactical position, who thinks if there was an actual terrorist, or let's say a revolution, or freedom fighter patriots, whatever you want to call them, and they wanted to take out government, who thinks having one guy with a gun to have every cop screaming and pissing their pants focused on this guy, how hard would it be to have a couple of guys walk up behind these officers who have totally lost their ability to do anything and either shoot them in the back of the head or stab them or ambush them? Who thinks that would work for a tactical situation against oppressive tyrannical government? Because these cops are freaking out of control over one dude with that's what happens when you program cops that they are the only ones to have guns and I was even more reactive in California when I saw a gun than normal because I wasn't used to it nobody had a gun you didn't see people run around with a gun you didn't see anybody but cops with guns so when you saw a gun you better either figure out that's a cop or he ain't supposed to have it and you get programmed in that mindset and that's what causes these extreme reactions. If people around the city walked around with guns and had guns, and the police knew there were a lot of people with guns, they wouldn't be pissing their pants right now because one guy has a pistol, and they're behind cover with bulletproof vests, and there's 30 freaking cops there. And they're screaming like they're in the middle of a combat zone, freaking getting overrun and bombed and, and you know, fighting 500 people, and there's only three of them. I mean, it's just crazy. Watch his head! Put your hands in the air! Go on, Put your hands in the air! Put your hands in the air! Oh my God. Put your hands in the air! Put your hands in the air! Put your hands in the air! Go get that! Put your hands in the air! You're gonna get shot! Drop the gun! Drop the gun! Drop the gun! Put your hands in the air! Put your hands in the air! Drop the gun to get shot! Put your hands in the watch, air! Watch. Put your hands in the air! Now, some people will view this as, Rick, you can tell the cops didn't want to shoot him, and they tried everything, and look, they're checking the boxes. They would have shot this guy as soon as, he, as soon as they got there. If they wouldn't be in the media spotlight and there wouldn't be cameras, this this would be a done deal. That guy would have shot, got shot immediately. All this screaming and yelling is not doing anything but prolonging the inevitable and the outcome is going to be the same. But this way they're going to have protection by saying, hey, we tried. Look, you know, it's kind of like when I jump in front of a car to stop a guy from running away. I'm protecting the public and I don't want him to run anybody over. But when I jump in the car, I thought he's going to run me over. So I shot him. Oh, OK. Well, as long as as long as they're doing it in the name of public safety, national security, security. It's for the children. Well, then it's okay. Watch. Put your hands in the air! Drop the gun! Wow, man, I feel safe now. 
Woo, doggies! Don't I just want to run around and hug a policeman? They're heroes! 62 rounds. One dude that never fired the gun at the police. And the cop was right next to him and didn't shoot the cop that was next to him. But Ricky shot somebody, and you know if he shot somebody, he could have, and if he moved, and he should have followed directions, and it's all his fault. Okay, I'm not defending the guy shouldn't have been shot. I'm holding government accountable for rules, procedures, command and control, not sporadic freaking spray and pray massive shooting. Everybody gets to shoot because one guy has a gun. So everybody gets to test their bullets, their aim, and gets to put a notch on their belt. It's just crazy. Stay, watch, watch, stay cover, take cover. Hell, there's like three or four cops here. There's a guy on the body camera. I mean, there's got to be 30 cops. You know, you notice they don't say that. You notice the pesky taxpayers don't get a bill for incidents like this. You know, politicians ought to be causing police departments to estimate every expense on high-risk incidents like this where people are shot. How many cops were there? How many dispatchers were tied up? How, how many calls weren't answered? How much resources were put onto one guy with a gun? How many cops were pulled off patrol? How many other areas were left open because we had 30 cops and 42 supervisors here that fired 62 rounds and a hell of gunfire because one guy had a gun and he never fired a round at the police. He only moved because he had 30 cops yelling at him, don't move, put your hands up, show me your hands, get on the ground, stand up, don't move, don't stand up, kneel down. Good grief. He's behind the tree. You got cops showing up wanting to shoot. I can't even see the guy. Where's he at? He's behind the tree. Okay, let's let's make sure everybody knows where he's at because when I'm shooting, hell, I got my gun out and uh, everybody's yelling, so I just want to know what I'm shooting at. Perfect. One supervisor get on the PA. All officers, stand down, stay in your cover positions. Nobody contact the subject. Either I'm talking to him or I'm designating officer so-and-so to communicate with the suspect. Everyone else, stand down on your verbal commands and stay behind cover. Would that be that hard? I mean, is that is that so much of a requirement for an agency that's the New York Police Department, one of the premier agencies, top-notch, right behind the FBI, another, another top-notch agency. I mean, it, can we not have a policy that says that? No, Rick, we can't say that. Shit, when somebody has a gun, everybody gets to go and everybody gets to shoot. Okay. What the fuck's going on over there? Get over there! Get over there! Guys, wa watch my back, please. Some Man, you, you would swear these guys have never been in a foxhole, never been in a base, never been in any situation where they were getting charged or attacked, and they have no clue. I mean, you would literally think these guys think they're all about to die because they're getting overrun, and you got one guy behind a tree with a gun. I mean, I, I just can't. You know, people go, Rick, you're just the cops, and it's a scary job, and it's very, very dangerous, and, 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 and you, you, it's changed since you've been out there, and you don't know what you're talking about, and, and it's dangerous, and they're all heroes. Okay. Watch your fucking crossfire. Watch crossfire, crossfire. <laughs> Whew, man, I just feel safe. Each time, I feel safer. Take off his belt, take off his belt, take off his belt. Look at all these cops. Is everybody scared? 
or are they just there to get in with the shooting? Yeah, we got to confirm your shadow. Do we need all these cops here? I mean, who's protecting the, the rest of the people that aren't doing anything bad? Well, Rick, you know, we got to have backup. You never know. You know, one guy with a pistol and shit, he might be able to reload after he kills the other 14 cops here. So that's why we need 30 cops. More government's always better for idiots. You can tell by the way these guys are walking around, they're really scared. It's a really dangerous situation. Very scary. Very dangerous, Rick. They're all heroes. Uh, all right, likely or not likely? Not likely. It looks like it's in the uh, right leg. Oh, this must be after the shooting. They're all standing around. Sorry. When they said likely or not likely, I'm assuming she asked, "Is he? do they think he's going to die? If they think he's going to die, then they probably sent out the homicide team or the uh, they have a different team probably when it involves murder. If somebody dies within 30 or no, well, it depends. Each state has it on. In California, it's within one year. If you die within one year, it turns to murder. So if I stab you in the shoulder and you go to the hospital for 30 days and then six months later you get an infection in that shoulder wound and you end up dying, my stabbing, which was, was assault with a deadly weapon or maybe attempted murder, now becomes a murder charge. And I can charge you with murder because the person died as a result of my stab wound. So that makes the difference on how it's investigated. If you think the guy's going to die, you, you want to send out, you know, you want to plan for a murder trial or a murder conviction for the DA. If you don't think he's going to die, then you don't want to waste all those time and resources that goes into a complex murder investigation. So you just treat it as, ah, eh, he was shot. He'll be all right. Just roll Charlie around. He'd be all right. All right. Seven, seven, there was one of these body cams that I want to find to where the guy was like, he's coming up. He's going down. Look out. He's going to look out. And I mean, he was just, they were just waiting for a reason to shoot. You guys give us a call to Rochester, Drop the gun! Notice every body cam has a different car. So these are officers that are spread out pretty far and everywhere. Drop the gun now! Right there, buddy. Get down! Get down, motherfucker! Watch his hands! Watch his hands! Bro, he's... Bro. Drop it! Drop the gun! He's both... He's taking a shot, bro. This is the one. I mean, he's just itching for a reason to shoot. Oh, I'm gonna go, man. Bro, he's gonna go. What? He's gonna go. Get ready. Let's go. Here we go. Here we go. Come on, he's gonna go. Here we go. Really? You got everybody screaming 10,000 different commands, and now you're talking about when's he gonna go and when he's not gonna go? Now, look. I get it, people. When, when you're in these situations, it gets chaotic. There's a lot of yelling. When you have multiple cops there, everyone wants to be in control. I, I've been in several situations, and so I know from experience that this happens. But it happens when you have less experience or people that haven't done it a lot. Once you've done it a few times, you learn, I need to control my breath. I need to just get behind cover. I need to be in a position to react. It does no good for everybody. You stop and you think about how crazy what's going on. And none of these guys think what they're doing is crazy because they're just they're just too busy panicking. They're all scared to death that this one guy is going to kill them all. Right down! Bro, he's going to go, man. Don't get down! Bro, he's going. He's going, bro. Look at his hands. He goes up, I'm going. Drop the gun! If he goes up, I'm going. I'm going. I can't wait to go. He's going to go. I'm going, man. If he comes up, I'm going to go. I'm going to go, and he's going to go, and we're going to go. Here we go. I'm going to get to shoot my gun and chest out my new bullets and my new oil and my new grip and my new fancy whatever. Run! Drop the gun! Nobody behind me. Nobody. Watch the crossfire! Put your hands in the air! Put your hands in the air! Drop the gun! Oh, he's going to come, bro. Bro, he's... Who thinks the guy with the gun is probably a little confused right now? Who thinks he thinks he, he is maybe confused like, damn, do I move? Do I not move? If I drop the gun, are they going to shoot me because they think I threw it at them? Uh, if I raise my hand, are they going to shoot me because they think I'm going to point it? Uh, should I get on the ground? Should I not get on the ground? If I move, are they going to shoot me? Who who thinks, raise your hand if you think 
The police officers are trained government officials who pass backgrounds and the only one that should have guns are doing a great job at communicating and talking to this person to de-escalate and control the situation appropriately. There's some cop out there raising his hand right now. Rick, you're just picking up the cops and they're doing the best they can. This is a very scary and dangerous situation. <laughs> I think this guy just hit the deck. He's on his knees. Probably smart move. He probably didn't hit his knees from the freaking suspect. He probably hit it from the, all the cops. Now, I got no problem with the cops saying I was afraid that other cops would shoot me. Because that's pretty reasonable. A matter of fact, I'll go as far as say you probably have about a 90% chance of getting shot by one of the other cops than you do by the suspect. 62 rounds. 12 hits. Where did the other, where did the other 50 rounds fly, ricochet, miss? Where did they go? We don't want to talk about that, Rick. Look, cops showed up, shot a man with a gun. They served the shit out of the community, and uh, everything's good. We all get days off, a lot of money, taxpayer money, all the days off, all the psych, all the shrink. You know, there'll be some woman who wants a medical retirement now because she heard all the rounds and it scared her and she can't sleep. And now she's afraid to go out on a job, so they'll give her a medical retirement. She'll get paid. That's what I'm saying. Every one of these incidents ought to have a tally on the bill. How much money did this incident cost? Because you people would be shocked. Because I assure you, it's well over a quarter of a million dollars, if not a half a million dollars. This is what your tax... When they say we need more taxes, when they say we're raising your property taxes for public safety. We got to protect our officers. Our officers have a tough job. They need this new car and this new gadget and this new helicopter and this new truck and this new armored vehicle. Uh, they, we, we need it to protect you. We're raising your taxes. Just, just work harder so you can pay more taxes. Yeah, that's it. All right, look, if you want to watch the whole video, you can. He's got a bunch more um, individual body cams. Uh, I think I've beat this dead horse enough. I think it's outrageous, but uh, anyway, we'll end that there.